Holy shit. Oh my god. Gordon. Parallel vertical lengthwise. Gordon, no. His forehead's always all folded up. Pissed Cause off. Because he's always angry. Yeah, well. Skip to the good stuff. There you go. There's it's like one these, of those these, little These dogs. are simple. Yeah, that's why I got it. The, it's the simple, actual, you get that. Yeah, the recipes are simple. His explanation, Jesus Christ. It, but... <laughs> some of these don't have pictures! <laughs> How am I supposed Gordon. to know what the end result looks like? I, I, Did I do it right? It looks like shit. That, I'm gonna try that one first. That, that lamb looks great. Ooh, bone in. Yeah. It yeah. falls well, off. Well, anyway, are we? Oh, sh what sorry. Going? Sorry, I was just reading Gordon Ramsay's home cooking. This is how. Are we sponsored by Blue Apron this week? This is uh, how. I this don't is know. how Blue Apron has changed my life. I'm now buying cookbooks written by Gordon Ramsay because I need someone to yell at me. And it's, the, yeah, the Blue Apron's too easy. I feel like that's gonna humble you. Just the way really Gordon Ramsay humbles everyone. Why are you wearing that? It's we're in Los Angeles. It's freezing upstairs. It's, it's below not 70 true. degrees. What? So you, it's called air conditioning. You can change it to whatever you want. Yeah. I have no control. What you goes on have the power. I Phil, have no control. Phil runs that room like a goddamn tyrant. Okay. Is Phil on like one of his like cooling uh, phases? He's his, like he goes uh, to his cryo regimen. freezers after his yeah. basketball games. Yeah. I don't know what he does. He just stands up there, all menacing because he doesn't sit. He has a standing desk and just like looking around, just makes us freeze because it makes us work harder or some shit. Yeah, you can't get comfortable. It's yeah. Bullshit. Well, air conditioning is sexist. Also, we're not upstairs, so you could feel free to take it off at any time. Yeah. Shibby, you might, you guys, everyone might know Shibby because he is the criminal. Uh, He's criminal, and uh, by the way, we have to do a shirt with your face on it with a PS4 door that says Shibby Criminal. Fine. I want one. Because I don't think you've trademarked the word Shibby, so we can get yeah, away with it. we're going to make money off of it. All right. uh, you might know Shibby from Tugs. He uh, randomly spouts out anger towards video games in what could potentially be described to review, but usually isn't because you can't understand anything you're saying. Uh, it's more of a saying. stream of consciousness uh, emoting yeah. of... Uh, Words and <laughs> feelings. Yeah. yeah, it's it. You do a lot of emoting, so that's good. It's it's the most honest kind of review out there, actually. The the thing that the main topic that I wanted to hit on this podcast, this episode, is fall gaming and Ooh. what you're excited for. And I know that you had a big. Uh, you love Overwatch, and they just had a big update. Why Halloween don't you update. Bring us up to speed on that. Is there a pumpkin spice gun? Yeah. So the Halloween update is from, I believe, October 11th to November 1st. Mm. And there's a new uh, uh, crate series that basically any loot crates you get while leveling up will be this Halloween version. And you can get new skins, new heroic intros, new emotes, all that kind of good stuff. So Brandon and I, for Realm, we did a video yesterday of a challenge where I bought 50 loot boxes, 40 bucks. Mm -hmm. And he bought 50 loot boxes, 40 bucks. You guys are just rolling in the cash up there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Up there on Realm? Oh, yeah, just blowing it. Great. Wow. Before we all get and fired. You, and or you something. unboxed the boxes? Yeah, and then you wow. just click it, and then it shoots candy everywhere. Oh, uh, yeah, it's like stuff. what everyone used to do before CSGO lottery. They used to just actually unbox them before selling them. Yeah, so we're them. hoping the video monetizes well enough that we can just keep doing it. And how are you selling these to children? I mean, I'm not selling anything. I'm just monetizing through Google. Oh, okay. But you're not, so you're not taking the skin. You have you all this loot on a market. Yeah, it's something with Overwatch you can't do is take it to the Steam market or a website. Oh, that's like good. Our, then what's uh, the point? I want to get rich, baby. We're all about <laughs> getting money. That's why me and Tori just sat in line on E line for the Yeezy yeah. boosts. Yeah. Not because I want to wear them. My amygdala like, is itching. It needs a tickle. You yeah. can sell them for twelve hundred dollars or something. Probably. I know, right? They sold out in five seconds. See, they sold out in yeah. five seconds. So everything's about money. Yeah, so uh, the new, uh, no one shoe should have all that power. But it's the new true. skins look great, and I feel like the Overwatch value you get from buying crates and the stuff you get in the crates typically is better than other free-to-play games, or I guess so buy-to-play games. Like is this Legends. only a seasonal thing, or can you use your pumpkin head forever? No, you can use the skin forever, but I believe right now something that people are pissed off about, really edgy here with the <laughs> Olympic update, the real one, is that you could not buy the new skin just with your in-game currency. You know how if you get a duplicate yeah, yeah. Your currency? So you couldn't do that. So now, I guess Blizzard's listening, where now you can buy the new items for the in-game currency, but it's at an increased cost. Okay. So people are happy about what that. What were the Rio uh, skins like? Was, was there a Ryan Lochte one with his white hair? There was and his a, like sprinter tracer, and she had a cape on her back. <clears throat> there was like soccer, all the so Olympians, capes. soccer yeah. player Lucio. That, okay. kind of, that kind of stuff. All right. Uh, now, what else is coming out that really is uh, tickling your fancy? I know that today, and I want you to, you can't say a damn word about I guess, because on Thursday I want you to, or Friday or whenever we do it now, uh, I want you to review Gears of War. Sure. So save all of that, all the anger for that. But uh, right now we can go home 
I mean, this is airing on Sunday, but it, we're filming this on Wednesday. Mm. We can go home and play Battlefield 1 for 10 Yeah, hours. I saw Lyric streaming it on Twitch TV, a mm-hmm. little website that I bet you no one's ever heard of. I only yeah. use YouTube gaming exclusively. Me too. And it looked <laughs> it's really... a great platform. It looked great, <laughs> but single-player games are typically not, at least shooter core are not really my focus. Yeah. So I'll probably just blow through that real quick. Well, no, it's you're you're in the multiplayer version of Battlefield 1, right? Totally, but yeah. can we play the multiplayer right now? I thought that I read that you could. It's 10 hours of whatever you want to do in the game. Hmm. Maybe he's just playing through the campaign. I don't know. And Wait, I don't so know it if cuts it gets you off at 10 hours? 10 hours, yeah. yeah. Oh. But then you can start it again either next Friday or next Wednesday. It's all strange because usually games launch on a Tuesday, but Battlefield 1 is launching specifically on a Friday but I'm not sure if that's the early access date or the actual date. I, that's the actual date. And then so then we get early access on Wednesday then. Something like that. It's very it's confusing. confusing. Well, it's very confusing. You know, war doesn't wait for your calendar. War yeah. comes when it comes. Yeah. What are you excited about this year that you can buy next year? I have no <laughs> idea. I, I paid almost no attention to E3 at PAX. I pretty much had blinders on. I wasn't really looking around. Uh... I was kind of excited to try Mafia 3, but it's not getting very good reviews. Yeah, so it's kind of getting shit on. I don't know. It looks fun. All, I, that game of, is garbage. Uh, really? Oh. It's bad. Are you going to review that one instead Man. of Gears of War? I could. It'd be more fun. Okay. Yeah, do that yeah. then. Do that then. It looked cool, but yeah. Everyone, don't get it. Everyone hates it. Uh, PSVR well, by the time is, you buy it, it'll be cheap and fixed. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Like, uh... It, it it sounds like a lot of the reviews are similar to, like, the Mad Max game that everyone hated, but, like, now that game... Like, when gifts of it pop up on, like, Reddit gaming, people are like, oh, it's, like, 20 bucks. Pretty good deal for that much. So it's, like, the the tide of opinion shifts definitely based on price. I played I Mad Max, and I thought it was a really pretty game that offered just nothing. I played for an hour, and I got bored as hell. It essentially it's still is, on my computer. It's essentially No Man's Sky, but you're mm. in No Man's oh, Land Jesus. instead. It really is. It's go from here to here, do these things. Oh, there's a lot Postmates. more going on. Keep talking about games. Okay, <laughs> there's a lot more going on. I was going to ask uh, Elliot if he's played Doom yet, but I guess that'll no. wait. No, that's going to be another one that waits. Uh, are you, do you have any interest at all? Are you going to, at any point this fall, play Call of Duty? I'll check it out. Yeah? I've now the thing I played about I, one minute of the last one. That I don't like about Call of Duty. Now, I reviewed COD 4 Remastered yeah. on the last Tugs. Link in the description or whatever yeah. you guys want to do. But that was uh, considered one of the best reviews so far this year. Just extremely <laughs> fuel rage, just retard mode. Yeah. So you're um, going to have to review Infinite Warfare then? I'll have to review Infinite Warfare, mm-hmm. and it's interesting because while I do rag on Call of Duty, I will give it that the value you get by buying that one game, mm-hmm. you get the campaign, I think you get... Nobody plays that. Is there any co-op campaign? Maybe, maybe not. I like the campaign. Nah. You get multiplayer, and Boo. you get zombies. Like, you get all that in one $6 package, which I think is pretty great. Yeah, but how much... Are they, gonna, are they still doing that Call of Duty Elite thing where you end up paying, like, a million dollars. <laughs> yeah, no, you, well, you get like the DLC or something with it, but I don't yeah, know. I mean, everyone sells that season pass bullshit now. It's been long enough to where like I might be down to give it a try as long as I have friends that are online playing mm. it a bunch. Because that's pretty much how I am with any game. Like, I loved Overwatch, uh, the the beta and, and stuff that I was playing. Loved. I loved it. And then when I when it came out, I don't have a gaming PC. So I was like, oh, I'll buy it for Xbox. People will be on Xbox playing nah. it. No one plays it on Xbox, so I didn't play it. I was like, this is too fucking, OP. This is fucking boring. It it sucks when you're not playing with friends, but I have a lot of friends that play Battlefield, and that's why I'm Whoa. really, really excited for playing. Ricky for has a one. lot of friends. Yeah, well, look at this guy. <laughs> like, specifically, the only friends that I have do friends, play Battlefield. Friends, they call me all the time, and they say, hey, have you seen this Battlefield? Let's go play Battlefield <laughs> together. No, it's my, so gr- many it's friends. my girlfriend's dad, one of my old uh, tour buddies, and... Uh, uh, that might be it. It's a lot less cool when you break it down. Yeah, it is a lot less cool. <laughs> God, <laughs> let's, I let's have many friends, out. many, many friends that talk about Battlefield 1. No, uh, I'm excited for it. The game's great. When does it come out? Like, for Nobody real? Nobody knows. Really? Next, it's Still? next Wednesday oh. or next Friday. Oh. Oh, Battlefield, yes. Yeah. Uh, and then I believe Call of Duty is like November 6th. Yeah, something like that. Oh, wow. also it comes out on uh, Election Day, so yeah. make, make sure that no one got It's vote. a ploy by, by uh, Trump the, campaign. Yeah. Don't go out and vote. <laughs> There's a game, so Call of Duty, uh... Now, there's also uh, Titanfall 2. That'll be coming out. Who cares? Who gives a shit? I do like how <laughs> it shrunk, shrunk down to TF2 and people are now getting confused. Like, oh, TF2, it's coming. Big update. It's like, no, it's Titanfall 2. Yeah, but two, but nobody's talking about Titanfall 2, so it isn't very yeah. confusing at all. Did anyone actually like Titanfall 1? Was there, is there a justification for this game existing? I tell people that I really enjoyed the pilot movement and those kind of mechanics, but anytime you got in a Titan or anything involving Titan combat, it was just really clunky and boring. As yeah. it would be in real life. And but also then, they had, like, the multiplayer. They had uh, 
NPCs running around acting yeah. like they were people that you were killing. So I like, thought I remember, it was going to be a MOBA. Yeah, I was playing it once and I was like, was this League oh, of cool. I'm like, I'm like, uh, I'm really I'm actually, ass. Yeah, I'm actually doing pretty well. And then like, it was like, oh, these are all not real people. That's why <laughs> there's just good. six of them just looking in a circle at each other. Yeah, just, just waiting yeah. for a grenade. It's like how I felt when I first started playing Rocket League. I didn't realize most of the players I was up against were bots. Oh, yeah. And or console players. <laughs> oh, yeah. snap. Because there's cross play. Yeah, I, I still like Rocket League. It's just too, everyone's too good at it. Yeah, now. it's too hard. I love that game. It's yeah. such, it's awesome. You got to get on the ground floor. And I thought I was doing that with Rocket League, and then I let it go for too long. And then I, it was just, people I was got stopped. really good at that game really fucking fast. Yeah, it was like it was accepted as a uh, competitive game within a month of its release. Yeah. It's very, I mean, mechanically it's very straightforward, but the high end of floating through the air and landing. Well, all those any sexy sport shots. mechanically, when you break it down to its core yeah, elements, it's very ball. simple. You just hit the ball. You hit the, the ball. Ball. You football. You throw it. A guy catches it, and you get points. Big deal. Or you just hand it to him, and he runs. Yeah. Or basketball. You put the ball in the hole, and it's fine. Yeah. Unless you're the Browns, they just fall over. Okay. Good. Damn. Good joke. Yeah. You're not even from Ohio. Yeah. Foys. Oh yeah, Fwiz. Hey, well, you know uh, when, when when football players fall over, you know you know what they do? They get the medic comes out and he, he treats them. Oh, Pepper. No, they get back up again. Pepper yeah. Burris comes out and and they go take care. Gives of them? them their little cortisone shots, <laughs> the steroids. Slaps them in the ass and says, "I don't care if you think you have a Eat concussion. Eat a salt tablet. <laughs> your concussion, your steroids. <laughs> Here's some steroids. Fuck you. They got too many concussions now. Everyone's getting concussed now that they've yeah. been looking for it. God damn. <laughs> they need to give them big, funny helmets. Yeah. So, Rocket League, that, that's why I want to get on the ground floor of Battlefield 1, because okay. I want to be the person who, six months from now, is still playing it and shitting on all, all over people, and playing you it. You don't play game. any game for six months. You're, that's true. You flip-flop so fast. I, I do, yeah. I think the longest I've ever played a game was like, here's here's the storm I played for a, a, about a year. You played uh, League of Legends, your Pantheon. I did play League of Legends for a while. War Warcraft is probably the longest game I've ever played. Yeah. Like, I've played that for, like, six or seven years. Wow! <laughs> yeah, that's Literally. what Literally. Whip him out Wednesdays. That's what it stands for. You can play with Hundar. And he's, Liz still, he's still Linsbot plays? Linsbot and all those kids. Yeah. I don't, know, I don't know. I used to be on Royal Militia. Top Oh, guild. Civ Six comes out next week. That's there what I'm go. stoked for. I forgot about that. I, are they going to fuck you over, even though you're a hardcore fan? Like, like most games do with their uh, uh, player base? So far, I haven't looked too much into it. Uh, apparently, it's now just really hard. <laughs> like they made it more complicated, because the the problem with Civ is that the game each playthrough takes a long time, uh, and you there's a lot of lulls in the gameplay where you're just kind of like clicking through turns. So they added way more shit you have to manage, especially later on in the game. And yeah, apparently it's just like it's overwhelmingly complex. Did you play the one that was like in between Civ Five and Six where it was in space? I did one, I bought <laughs> Beyond Earth, played it once. I heard that was terrible. never played it again. It was boring as fuck. They, the, so yeah, they made it so that none of the enemies are aggressive. So I had to just be a dick. And be like, I'm bored. Let's try to kill each Enough other. Enough of space trade yeah. peace bullshit. It was all, it was too modern. It was just like passive aggressive politics. Because <laughs> Civ is usually on like a, a hex board or something like that. Yeah. Or like the, whatever shape they are. How does that work in space when you can... Oh, it was a planet. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't like outer space. It Got was it. like you're colonizing a planet. And there's like five other companies from Earth who are all doing it at the same you time. You can just say like, fuck this and just leave. No, I don't know. I I did not get too into you it. You play an hour. I mean, I would. Yeah, I was well, like, because like, like when you play Civ the first time, you get a rude awakening early in the game when like Shaka or Gandhi like pretends to be your friend and then tries to like destroy you like after thirty turns. Right. You're like, okay, shit, I have to be prepared for a lot of things. Beyond Earth, like I was just okay. Let's uh, let's build a power plant. Cool. Okay. okay. So is this just okay. like because I've never played it? Is it like Sim City or something? Mm. What's the point of it? You build colonies and Civ is like, uh, well, I, generally uh, a full playthrough of Civ, you start off in prehistoric ages. You have a big map. You have a whatever number of players on that that each start off. And like, is it on, online? Uh, you can. You can. Yeah. It's not ideal for that because the games take so fucking long. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so I mean, each player starts off on a single tile of a massive map, and then you expand, and you have to make. Alliances with other countries on trade. It's like, oh, my people and my land doesn't have enough gold, but this guy has a bunch of gold. And, and trade him wheat. Yeah, give him we, some of my we wheat. We should uh, make Donald Trump play that first and see how he does ah! it. <laughs> I'm going to go kill Genghis Khan. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's very... Uh, like once once you get a hang of like the sort of mechanics of it, 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 it is very addictive. So this new one is basically giving you more... 
like resource management in between your big moves or something. Or mechanics. Yeah, well, the the main improvement with every iteration of Civ isn't really graphical. All of this one, the graphics are better, but who cares? You can you can still play the game on like literally a like board game mode. Uh, the all all the improvements are in like AI and um, just the sort of game mechanics, making them make sense and be fair and have a level playing field where you can win through various different means. Is this a good travel game? Can you like shut it down and save it and then come back to it like an hour later at like the hotel? You don't yeah, it's turn-based. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it's turn-based. Like you can literally just open the game up, play one turn, close it. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I'll try that. It does get very uh, resource intensive later on in the game because it's just literally just a giant calculator and the more Oh, numbers you're comp- that you're your putting laptop's into on it. fire? Yeah, yeah, spreadsheet that. Yeah, it just it becomes very complex. Hmm. Uh, just calculating. So, what's like, the difference map. between Civ Five and Civ Six? Is it just graphical and the AI? Uh, is yeah, there different any kind AI. Of... The game mechanics are different, but it's um, the same basic concept with the same world. Yeah, same and essential stuff. concept. I think there's different leaders. It, it, basically, they, you know, they look at what worked and what didn't work and what they want to add to it that wasn't there. And the full didn't. title is still like Sid Meier's Civilization Six. Something. I think something. so. Yeah. Even though he's like not involved. Right. Sabans, well, Sim Sabans, <laughs> Sim Power Six. Rangers. All right. Uh, we got questions. Fall gaming done. I think that's all that's coming out that anyone cares about, right? Yeah. Uh, no, PSVR. No, no I want it. Trade. I don't want to buy it. Yeah, I'll be, I, I'll get around to it. Let's I get one gonna, in the office. First. It's gonna be one of those. Yeah, things. Yeah. Why don't we have one in the office? Well, it comes out tomorrow. Technically. I thought it was already out. But uh, it's one of those things where I feel like after Christmas. It's either going to be heavily discounted, or you'll be able to go pick up a used one for pretty cheap. <laughs> My kid didn't like it. It doesn't fit his little head. Well, from what I, from, from the reason that I'm not going out and putting the money up for it right now is, uh, I feel like it's going to be one of those things where it's like the Wii, where it's like, man, it's cool for myself for Everyone's like a week or two, over. and then when people come over, you put them in VR. It's fun, but aside yeah. from that, it's t- a total like gimmick. <laughs> I do th- like that PlayStation's doing it, and I'm interested to see what kind of AAA titles come out for it in the coming months. But I've experienced enough VR to know that I, it's not something that I want to use for six hours a night when I get home. Like, all right, I'm home. Bleh. Like, maybe watch a... You game for six hours a night? And then you have your Sometimes, girlfriend yeah. or your wife bugging you, and you got to take it off, put it back on, take it off. No, my girlfriend plays League of Legends all night long, so it's fine. Yeah, Dana. Yeah. Wow. Get it. Uh, Gamer house. No, I, I usually, yeah, I mean, I don't play six hours straight. When Battlefield comes out, I probably will go straight home and play till midnight or one. Yeah. That's, that's what I did with No Man's Sky. Yeah. Haven't touched it in weeks. Good. I never made it to the center. I heard I heard about what's happened at the center, what happens at the center, and I was like, you know what? Fuck this game. Everyone is right. Oh, wow. You New defended it for so long. It's a fine, <laughs> it's a fine, uh, it's fine for just calmly doing nothing. Hmm. I saw a Reddit thread this morning that the reason why they're not apologizing on Twitter or anything like that, just zero communication, is because people can take that and then like try and legally get after them for saying like, oh, they're even apologizing. They yeah, know they apologies up. are uh, an admission in, of guilt. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's true. So it's like the you see that thing that they invented on the, the, one of the new Kickstarter things where it's like a little block that you can like fidget with, you, like click the button and mm. it has a bunch of like things for people who can't sit still. What? It's like a little block. Like a stress and it just ball? Has, yeah, but it's like a new version of a stress ball. That's kind of like what No Man's Sky is. Like you're just sitting <laughs> and you have nothing else to do. You're like, ah, just it's, it's cookie like, clicker. Yeah, yeah, it's cookie clicker. Which you loved. That's why you love and No Man's Sky. And a fucking tuber simulator. I love it too. The cookie clicker was literally just, ah, look, uh, I'm winning. I'm cooking I'm the cookie really fast. I'm clicking. <laughs> it's designed for the numbers monkeys. Numbers are getting bigger. <laughs> It's not designed for monkeys. Come How's on, this you. tuber simulator? Is this a fall release? Uh, yeah, it's doing great. I am level 18. I have 233,000 subscribers. Oh, shit. Uh, my next uh, quest to we- is to reach 250,000 subscribers. How, how are you monetizing, though? Uh, doing really well. Make a lot silver. of money for my- I have a, a separate room now that's my Jurassic Park room, and I made it look like Jurassic Park. Did you get that silver play button from YouTube in the mail? No, not yet. Damn. No, you know what I started playing last night? I can't remember the title. It's, uh, <laughs> it's that side scrolling game with like the movie badasses like throwing grenades and shit. Wait, the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie? Uh, hmm. fuck. It was a PlayStation Plus. Uh, Mobile Strike? F- Mobile no. Strike. <laughs> uh, it was a fuck. Can't remember the name of it. It's fun though. Can't All remember right. the title, but it's a good time. Just it's on PlayStation 
store plus it was a plus exclusive like two months ago i at least once a month i'll go in the plus thing and just download it so that you just have it for later on you know i've I've played more than anything in the past like two weeks overwatch tetris ultimate tetris is great for just like the best scenario i have with tetris is like if i'm gonna go out somewhere and i'm like ah man i got like an hour before i have to leave i'll play tetris for an hour straight and it's like Mm. the best thing ever and the it's really fun playing online. I never realized how fun it could be playing Tetris online against people. I got really addicted to it when it was a Facebook game. Yeah, I think yeah, it still yeah, is. yeah, But yeah. when it first came out, I was like playing Tetris for like two hours so a night. Oh yeah, it was how bad. is the online? Where is it? Two, you see your board, You're playing their board, yeah. and try Well, to... they have four. You can go up to four people, and it's oh, whoever gets knocked out to the last yeah. person. Uh, and you can also uh, there's other versions of that where you can set it by speed. You can do it by like high score. It's it's there's a lot going on with Tetris Ultimate. I, I actually really enjoy it for either a quick jump in and go or mm. like it. It's cool. I mean, it's a fun game. I actually really really like playing that. And uh, recently, I don't know if it's still the same price, but another one that I can highly suggest now, now that it's not full price, is. Uh, the fucking crazy car loop game. I can't remember the name of it right now. I just crazy drew a blank. Trackmania Turbo. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. It went cheaper. It's down to like 25 bucks or something like that. For 25, 100% worth the money. You love your racing games, just like Forza 3. Uh, I still don't really get it. I don't get so where it's, why it's fun. What's your problems with that game? It's it's like open world, non-structured. Mm. Like I ha- you, There's a thing where you can like say, hey, what should I do next? It's like, oh, go smash this board. Okay, cool. I'll go smash the board. Like the only thing that's fun what? is like unlocking cars and stuff, but there's not really any like. So you wish there was more structure. <clears throat> a little bit more, but also it's like I don't understand. Like, it's hard for me to grasp what kind of actual online multiplayer mode mm. exists in it because there's a bunch of different ones. Yeah, there's and a I co-op there's, adventure. It is like ghosting, where it's like not real people, mm. but it pulls from your friends list, or your yeah, club, the driver tars or whatever like that, and it, it's all just. Strange. It's not exactly what I want out of a racing game, and that's not to say that it's not a good game. It's just just not what I want out of a racing Got game. It. I like Trackmania because I, it's first of all it's fucking bonkers. Second of all, you go up against people's times. It's like trials or whatever. Right. So I don't know. It's just not my cup of tea. Have you tea. played much uh, GTA Online as far as racing goes? I always enjoyed that a lot. Mm, yeah, that was I, more structured but still silly. Yeah, and people are online and actually playing it. Yeah. So that's what I kind of like about it. I don't like the fact that. There's these ghosts driving around with my friends' names on them. Oh, mm. well, just single player, but yeah. it still has that online component, and then you can actually go in online and. I think so. I haven't race real. I've done it. It's yeah. It's good. The cars are cool. The designs that people make are awesome. And it's... I was in a review of Forza, but the game's really good, so I couldn't really poop on it that much. But one thing I do like that I hope that Microsoft and Xbox keep keep doing because of the Windows 10, Xbox. They're being come, becoming the same thing at some point. Is that if you buy it on one, you get it on the other. Mm-hmm. So I could play upstairs on my computer. Save it or just cloud saves and then go on my Xbox and play it. And yeah, I, I really like that. Twice. I like that a lot. Yeah, I really wish they would do that for uh, even if you're not cross playing online with Xbox and PlayStation. I'd actually really like that for uh, <clears throat> games like Battlefield One because mm. I, I have friends that play on PlayStation, friends that play on Xbox, and I'll be honest, it probably looks a little bit better on PlayStation. And uh, but all my friends that actually play like all the time are on Battlefield or on, on uh, Xbox, so it would be cool to like. Because it was the same thing with, a uh, good example is Rocket League. Yep. I got Rocket League on PC, and I played for so long. And then I got it on PlayStation, I had to start all over again. Yep. I don't know if they've changed that or not, but... Uh, I do think you need a new account, yeah, but... Yeah, so, there you go. That That's a good reason for having it. But I do like the setting on Rocket League where I can just turn off crossplay and just get all those PS4 console nerds out of my game. Mm-hmm. So just PC Master Race players only, because other kids suck. <laughs> anyway, speaking of you writing stuff, lose. it's like why did I fucking lose this game? It's oh, they're the PSN online. Get off my kids. team, scrub. Yeah, William Culverwell wow. at Culverwell W. Uh, he wants to t- do a little behind the scenes thing on ETC, but I like I guess we, we've talked about that enough. What what goes into every Tugs review by Shippy? What what do you, what gets you going? What gets, what gets your creative juices flowing? Where, where does it start? What game do you pick? How do you pick it? If Gordon so, Ramsay were writing a recipe for a so usually review. usually I go on to Steam and see if there's been any releases that I want to check out. Usually a couple days before, so I can get my you know teeth into it. Or if it's something I've been playing, such as uh, yeah, everyone thinks I have so many teeth, it's because I just laugh a lot. And then, you know, it's because you can't speak correctly. That's correct. Mush mouth. Teeth yeah. get in the way of the tongue. Mm-hmm. And then usually I'll go on if it's something that I haven't played fully through. I'll look online for some walkthroughs or whatever to see some uh, gameplay that I have not reached yet for some longer titles. So. Yeah. But when, at what point do you go, all right, I've got enough ammo. 
time to destroy this game and what's your thought process going in? Like, what do you, what do you say to yourself to, like, motivate you to be an asshole? It, it's really just taking, if I did a video game review and it wasn't paid by, like, IGN or something because those guys are all getting, you know, the, the fat <laughs> they're paychecks. They're on the take. The, yeah. yeah, they're on the take. And it's like, what if I did that? Did not care about future reputation if, like, Sony or Microsoft would watch this as, like, a permanent blacklist that I'd go <laughs> on. Yeah. And then read as fast as I can just because the old reviews used to be i believe 45 seconds one minute i'd be held to that uh-huh. so now i try to hold to that while i can go longer you guys let me I don't have, it's just more information i don't have hundar just beating me yeah which is great it's more efficient though it's and then a I better way to talk read as fast as i can just one take now a lot of people don't realize that when you guys read that if you screw up we'll just do it again just edit that out you I'd never, never see it we'd, we'd never okay. make mistakes but for me it just i just go and that's just part of yeah. part yeah. of the schlick the schlick yeah, yeah. The like schlick. shtick and yeah. schlock <laughs> mixed together. And schlock. And then and you have schlock. to go find a nice, cute outfit every time. Yeah. 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 Well, it's going to be really sad when you're not here doing that anymore. It Anyways, is, it is very on. ethical. I don't know. It's, it's looking at who, who made the game, who published the game. Yeah. And then seeing if there's any description, discrepancies versus Xbox, PlayStation, PC, stuff like that. Just kind of just taking the pulse a little bit. Mm-hmm. And then for my own. Do you, ever, uh, do you ever get shit from people that take your reviews really seriously and feel offended? Yeah, I mean, there's definitely the commenters that want me to die or will unsubscribe <laughs> if they don't cut out my part or just skip yeah. the part entirely. I mean, those those comments are all over on Tugs. But I do have the the, the hashtag Team Shibby, yeah. Fanboy Elite. Shibby Criminal. Th- that I love. That, yeah. But Shibby. You know, sure. Don't make me want to cry at night when you I... You got to get that shirt. The when Shibby I, when Criminal. I sh- when I share the video with like, hey, Liz, I, I did a Tugs thing. Let's watch it. It's up on Friday. Yeah, and what does she think of that? She thinks it's very silly and just how... Uh, just uh, stupid. Glad you got it out of your system. Do her, yeah. do her students ever come up and ask about her mush mouth husband? No, because no? they're literally special ed and, oh. and pre K. <laughs> so that's, so that's our demographic. I I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> all right, well, but I, the, the they comments... love. They probably love you. <laughs> <laughs> He's making all these loud noises. He's great. Look how tall he is. I can trust him. Yeah, he's got a bright red face. <laughs> it's easy to track. Look how shiny his forehead is. Yeah. You got your gunners on already. I know, right? Mm-hmm. You're prepared. They go well with this jacket. It Thank looks you. like you're wearing green yeah. day colors already. Thank you. Yeah, the Packers got to start playing better. Yeah. I can't believe we lost the Vikings. Well, it's because they're doctor. needs to fix them up better. Yeah. Disgrace. Yeah. They're falling apart. Uh, yeah, it's, it, all my reviews are, are for fun. People should not take the show or the reviews seriously. It is funny when people are like, you know... Been watching this show for months, and like, guys, you've just gone too far this time. Like, <laughs> wait, so you've been watching this for months, and you still <laughs> haven't figured out that like, none of this is meant to be taken seriously. Yeah. Well, the, the the thing that I've found was hard sometimes is uh, like getting into that when I'm gonna write it. Like, I have to write this like a fucking asshole, and not like it's <laughs> uh, yeah. and not like it's an actual informative thing. Mm-hmm. Cause there's been times where I'm like writing something, and I'm just like, I'm writing a fucking gaming news show. Yeah. Now I need to write it like a fuck like it's tugs, not like it's a gaming news show. <laughs> right. And it's different. Like it used to be so much more ridiculous because we actually did hate it and it was a whole thing. And now it's just like hoping the show would get canceled uh, or that. Yeah, or... and now it's like Tugs is this monster on its own, so we have to actually have it. But mm-hmm. hopefully our chief programming officer would see it and say, like, yeah, you can't do this anymore. Yeah, <laughs> no, we we did it on purpose originally to get rid of it mm-hmm. and to make fun of everything. We still make fun of everything. But, but we, then we yeah. truly found out that no one here watches our content. Yeah, yeah, no, it's fine. It's great. Uh, everyone, Shibby, Elliot, sure. at DemonChild43HP wants to hear your suggestion on how to stop the clowns. First of all, <laughs> this clown epidemic is not a fucking epidemic. It's a plague. There's a handful of scary clowns throughout the country. Most of, even the, the bad ones with bad intent aren't doing anything other than taking advantage of your fucking weak mind being scared of brightly colored people. So uh, I'd say the best strategy is to uh, man the fuck up and uh, continue on with your life and stop being afraid of fucking clowns. Just ignore them and they'll go away? Yeah. How much of a pussy are you that someone in a mask that they clearly bought from a Halloween store is, like, making you scared for your life? You're fucking pathetic and you really need to, like, just man up. So well, everyone that says that they've seen the clowns, eventually when they talk about it, they're like, well, my friend saw it and he told me about it. Yeah, it's not, it's such bullshit. And, you know, as we covered, it's it's real bad for the legitimate clowns out there who are just yeah. trying to, you know, make exactly. kids happy and shit. Well, it's also 
the media is perpetuating it. Mm-hmm. Now you have copycats in other countries. So Copy clowns. If you think about it, it is true. If you just ignore them, they'll go away. And the best part of that is... Uh, like ISIS. It's like, they're like bullies, yeah, and ISIS. Yeah, the best part is uh, you can ignore it because it's not actually happening to you. Yeah. It's just something you heard on the news. <laughs> yeah, it's not even real. So, uh, I wonder how much uh, yeah. of it is fake and just someone trying to get a, a high-viewed Instagram post at this from point, their yeah, At this point, yeah. it's mostly that. There's so many like Instagram and Twitter accounts that are dedicated to that, like at Clown Hunters, and it's all just people faking it. You're yeah. just like, oh, let's go down to the Halloween store, buy a $10 clown costume, and like film our like clown interaction video. Like, oh my god, it's a clown, he's chasing us. It's just like, it's a prank, bro. Yeah, I saw all these FaZe Clan boys, and everyone just reacting to these clowns that one guy was dragging a rake on the ground, and there was a van of kids, and filming it, and then uh, the driver got out and hit him, and they drove off, and like, let's go yeah. back, let's go check it out, and then Fake. the clown jumps on the car, it's... How much of this shit is fake? It has it's to all be stupid, fake. and it's like all the parents, all the dumb fucking suburban moms who dropped out of college I'm to so birth a child. <laughs> they they think it's all fucking real. They're like, oh, okay, I'm not gonna let my kid go to school. I'm like, fuck you, bitch. It's and the same people that are like, there's gonna be razor blades in the apple. Yeah, like, no, it's exactly idiot. that. It's it's a mis. It, the worst thing is that it's a misdirection from actual <laughs> things that yeah. you should be aware of. And scared of. Like no Hillary's Ill- emails. Yeah, those damn emails. Yeah. Where are they at? No one's putting razor blades in your kid's candy, and clowns aren't going to kill your kids. But you should probably take a more active role in your child's life to make sure that the things that are influencing them and their friends are positive and uh, you know, aren't going to lead to actual problems further down the line. Like Keemstar. <laughs> sure. The, uh, the big problem here is that the same people who are worried about razor blades and uh, ecstasy in their kid's Halloween candy are the ones that... <laughs> Are not giving them uh, the shots that they need to not get the measles oh, and the mumps right. yeah. and uh, break out in diseases that have been cured for. Well, vaccines haven't are you bad. heard? Vaccines have razor blades in them. That's true. They They're made out of razor cloud. blades. They're made out of razor blades. Yeah, really sharp, thin razor blades. Some some folks call them needles. Yeah. But vaccines give your really kids just autism. long razor blades. That's mm-hmm. what I heard. Yeah. Yeah. And, I believe uh, it. You know, yeah, you're living proof. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Johnson told hey. me, <laughs> yeah. or Jill Stein. <laughs> she saw a couple emails. Trump thinks vaccines cause autism too. It's gonna be a bad. That's so, preposterous. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. it's real dumb. Uh, how Vaccinate are you gonna stop your the kids. Clowns? Just, just stop. Stop liking posts that have fucking clowns on them. Stop engaging. You stop, you're gonna, gonna be stop. able to stop the clowns the same exact way that you can stop tech racks from destroying mm-hmm. phones. Don't pay any attention to them. The colrophobia, the fear of clowns that is not actually recognized by any <laughs> psychiatrist as a real thing, is like. It's like having a gluten deficiency. It's annoying. It's like, <laughs> oh my god, I'm like one of those people that's like afraid of clowns. Like, I'm so scared of clowns. I'll tell you like, what. Oh, here. cool. Yeah. Fuck you. Something the viewer that you can do right now. It's very easy. Something on Facebook or YouTube. If you see a clown video, don't fucking click it. Yeah. Don't give that Report thing. Report it. Don't give it views. Yeah. They're mass committing flagger. a crime. They're curi- they're committing a Join crime. Join the YouTube Hero Nazi program. Yeah. Yeah. You'll get your uh, black and white stripes. Become SS. Safety yeah. soldiers. Safety soldiers. <laughs> <laughs> Use your fascist dashboard or fashboard. <laughs> fashboard. Who made that video? It's like Chad Wild something. It was, it was a great one. Something like that. Yeah. Fantastic the, the video. The best version of it, yeah. Is he calling the safety soldiers? Yeah, the yeah. SS. Great. Yeah. great. So That's good. fucking awesome. I love that. Uh, we already did fall games. Sorry, at damn, to, to credit them, at D.A.M. Martone was the one that asked about fall games. Right on. But also asked about Westworld. Have you seen it yet? Episode one. Seen this seen episode one as well. You've you guys seen... gotta catch up. Episode I know. two is really like episode one lays the the railroad of, of success for this show. It's a good term. Episode to use. two really takes the stairway to greater success. Okay. To the keys. It, it, it's a great show. Uh, I, I I think it has a lot of potential for being one of the best shows ever, but with that comes the potential for being extremely disappointing like Lost was. And did it get signed already to five new seasons or something like that? I've heard something ridiculous. Yeah. Before well, it it's because it's because Game of Thrones only has like two mini seasons left. So HBO uh, panic. Yeah. Well, the, yeah. They 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 need their next Game of Thrones. And with Westworld, they shot that pilot almost two years ago. Mm. So I'm pretty sure they saw the potential in it and got the best people on board and were like, we need. This to be the new game really successful for a long time, so we're gonna make it as good as possible. So that that leads me to believe that 
it's going to be good. It was incredible. The uh, the C the CG in it and stuff like that, and the practical effects are so believable and awesome that there is not a lot of Uncanny Valley. And the the Uncanny Valley that they use, they use it in that way. It's to like where meant like, to be. Yeah, you're like okay, you can see in a in where a, people are like jerky movements well, yeah, and like even, their eyes but, are lo- moving weird. Yeah, little subtle things in people's faces that yeah. are supposed to freak you out. I don't know how they do that. It was it's it was incredible really cool. to see in a net like not a network but HBO essentially a TV mm-hmm. show actually like do better than movie right. uh kind of graphics and we don't want to give away if you haven't seen the show it would be doing you a disservice to give away anything about what's going on in it other mm. than the basic premise but you probably already know that anyway. But even that, like my girlfriend, I made her watch the first episode with she had no knowledge yeah, of what it was going into it. Yep, same. Uh, and like the show, really, it does not like doesn't help you along at all. It yeah. is it throws you into the deep end, and I think that's actually a fun way to watch it because right off the bat, it's like trying to mislead you about yeah. A lot of things my girlfriend that are going within on. fifteen minutes was like, "Wait, what the fuck is going on?" <laughs> And I was like, oh, you really didn't hear about this show? No. Uh, it's like guests and all this other crazy shit. Yeah, yeah. so uh, all I could say is that, I mean, if you follow our suggestions of shows and we've accurately led you along a great path so far with stuff like Fargo, Vice Principals, I don't know. People even said that we, I mean, this is a year and a half ago, but we got them into Rick and Morty and stuff like that. It's mm-hmm. like, go about, watch Westworld right now. I think Archer? uh, Archer's great. Yeah. But uh, it I really wish you guys had seen episode two because the show gets really into like some cool uh, philosophical stuff that relates to gaming in a lot of like interesting ways. Where it's like it's it's not that far. Like, it's not absurd at this point to think that video games in like a hundred years will be about interacting with like just fully cognitive like <laughs> yeah. NPCs. And, like, thinking about just, like, do these things deserve rights? Like, do they count as people or are they our slaves and shit? And it really digs into a lot of those things. If I like, grab them by the pussy, is that sexual harassment? Right. And and on the show, it's like, oh, you can do whatever the hell you want to them. You can kill them. You can rape them and shit. And it's like, whatever. They're not real people. But they are. <laughs> they're, they're, like, dealing with fucking trauma here mm-hmm. and experiencing real emotions. So it raises questions that are, like, I think going to actually be relevant. Just like that VR the, story century. of the guy in VR touching the girl's boobs, NPC, and then her reacting negatively to it. And yeah. How do you feel it's, about that? Uh, I, it, I mean, it, that's just like a canned reaction. Yeah. But if it gets to the point where like an AI like legitimately believes that it exists, oh, and yeah. has like and it's emoting somewhat, accurately to yeah, what it would in real life. It has yeah. somewhat independent thoughts and stuff. Like, yeah, you get into some weird <laughs> territory there. Mm, yeah, uh, it's uh, it's very strange. It, I'm I'm excited to see more. I just haven't watched. I'll watch the second episode well before this actually airs because I'm really excited. I want to be on the same day as everyone else very mm. soon. Uh, so yeah, it's it's fucking great. Oh, one thing that I want to bring up uh, aside from Westworld, and I don't think you guys have seen it yet, is Atlanta. Mm. I have not is, started it. It is so fucking. The good. first two are on YouTube, I think. Yeah, uh, it's a great show. It's just like it's it's Donald Glover and his Don Glover. Yeah, Don Glover. And his uh, childish Gambino. I think it's his cousin or or something gets uh, starts getting noticed in the rap world. He's beca- he's an up and coming uh, uh, hip hop artist, and uh, it kind of just follows Donald Glover. It actually splits off at one. It's kind of like Entourage, in a way. Sort, sort of, of, but it hasn't really got there yet. They're still just at the bottom of the barrel kind of situation no success, going yeah. on. Yeah, and it's kind of them dealing with like us. with a minor amount of success but still living in the same situation that you've been born into. Okay. And and like the hardships that they're going through with each step of the way. Donald Glover's like really down on his luck. He has no money. He has a really shitty job and he's trying to Can relate. So he's try he's trying to attach himself earnestly to uh his friend's success in a way that benefits both of them, but it do- obviously comes off as a little bit of hey man, please like help me like yeah. come up with you and stuff. Please take my video game reviews. But it's good because it's a good it's it's a great uh comedy slash drama. And that those are always the best when there's humor yeah. inside of the, well, like it, a bleak situation. It's a it's a, a subject that the you don't see a whole lot of. Like I mean Straight Outta Compton was a cool look at hip hop in the like late eighties, but yeah. uh yeah, it's cool that there's a show like that that kinda shows what that's like now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I need to watch it. I, my girlfriend watched the first two or three 
It's really good. me to watch it, and, and since, it's got a great since soundtrack. she watched Westworld, and I asked, so I should watch this one. <laughs> it's got a fair. great soundtrack too, with a lot of uh, <clears throat> great hip hop in it. And uh, aside from that, fucking Migos is in an actual episode as drug dealers. <laughs> Nice. And okay. they are they self identify like they are they are playing yeah. themselves in the show. They're yeah. like, we're Migos. Like at the end of it, I was just like, because when I saw it, I was like, oh cool, Migos is in this episode, and they're doing stuff together. I don't want to like give any of it away, but like that that's cool that they're in it. And then at the end, they identified themselves with their actual stage names and the name Migos. And I was like, okay, that, still on board. Just really weird for them to, yeah. to play. You said there is episode that. one or two on YouTube right now. I think I think it's still because there I too. think I've seen a comment on one of the Tugs videos that they got an advertisement for this Atlanta show. Oh, but it was actually the full episode. Yeah, it was a that, skippable ad, and that they just watched it and they're like, I don't even realize. Yeah, I, I, I thought this was the video. I, was I read watching. a bunch of articles about how fucking genius that was because it's like oh, they're rather, true viewing it. Well, yeah, it does, the numbers yeah. don't count, but it's uh, it's like if you're already gonna spend money paying for advertisements on YouTube, why not just buy the ad space, and play the entire episode well, yeah. as an ad. Because you can start it with that logo, so people are like, oh, cool, it comes on at FX. And then anyways, uh, oh, God, I'm watching it right yeah, now. And right. it's pretty, because, I mean, the, the, as I'll long say, as like, the, the intro, first, like, grabs you. The first uh, episode starts out really strong, so, I mean, it, and it ends on a, it ends on a big high note, or it begins on a big high note, and ends on that same high note. It does this kind of, like, loop. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's a great first episode. Yeah, Check that, it out. It's free. Just go fucking watch it. That's a brilliant, like, th- every new show on every channel should air their pilots on YouTube for everyone to yeah. watch. Because uh, the biggest thing with these shows is like people n- don't have access. Well, it's like well, it's not like even accessibility. It's it's you have to give the user the want and desire to go searching for people it in are, a way that isn't as easy yeah, as Yeah, people are fucking lazy. It's like oh, the premiere of Atlanta is right here. I can just Watch it right now. It's going to also be very interesting now that you bring that up to see how just how John Stewart's HBO show evolves because he's he's doing it backwards. He's reverse engineering that tactic to where he everything Supposedly, goes on. Supposedly, yeah. Everything goes on YouTube first. Yeah, it's going to be a week of YouTube content that gets condensed into a into Sunday actual, show yeah. that hmm. airs after or before John Oliver's show. Yeah, which is uh, it's if it, if it happens the way they described it, and I'm hoping it does. That's like a really brilliant way to do it because it's like you get the up to the minute sort of internet stuff with the uh, completely unplugged uh, cord cutting crowd. Yeah. And then for, you know, your parents or just people that aren't as internet savvy, they get the, they get to catch up once a week. Um, they, they won't know the difference. I mean, yeah. that, that makes me think of another one that just started on Monday. That's Vice News Tonight, which I've, I watch Monday night's episode, Tuesday night's episode. It'll be a, something that I watch every single night. How long it is, is it? It's 30 minutes. Okay. And it is, is the on? most informative is HBO? HBO. It's the most informative news show. Like, I was watching it last night with my girlfriend, and she's like, I never hear about any of this on... We watch CNN at the gym. I have CNN well, and because they just talk about the goddamn election no, all day. But, and it's talking heads. Even if yeah. it's a, a big event nationwide, like even if it's the Samsung thing, it's like, just we have mobile expert uh, James Donovan on right yeah. now, and he's going to tell him what he thinks about this. The Vice News Tonight Show is straight up journalism. and I know said, nothing about that. It's a it, it they did Vice News on HBO for a couple seasons. Now they're doing a nightly news show, uh, and it's different from fucking regular Vice. There's a difference between Vice News and Vice. Vice is, is like we sent guys to uh, the monster truck rally on, a, on, on acid. acid. Uh, this is actual journalism and st- and it's a actual nightly news show that's prepackaged and it has great segments. It, it starts with like headlines and getting through that briefly. It has like two or three main stories and then it ends on some kind of like pop culture thing. That's what they've done so far. Cool. But the thing that I've said both nights watching it is, thank God this is done by HBO, because this show, if they're doing this nightly, is going to be the most expensive news show ever, because you look at stuff like MSNBC, CNN, and Fox, it is someone in a studio reading headlines, going to talking heads. It's dirt cheap to produce. In two episodes, they've sent people across the country the day it happens to be somewhere to cover that event. And it's like... You used to see that a lot more. You don't see it as much now. Hmm. Or it's something that takes a week to produce. They're doing it daily. It's really good. I hope they don't like fall off on what they're doing. I don't think they will. I'm sure HBO has given them a lot of resources and a decent Make a documentary budget, so. five days a week, 52 weeks a year. Now, is this yeah. something you're recording or going on like HBO Go and just hitting play? Uh, so I have HBO, but I, I watch it whenever it's on, like Got HBO it. Now. So it's just like, oh, it's because it airs on the East Coast, I think, at like five or six or something, which is crazy, too. So by the time I get home, it's on HBO Go or Got Now it. or whatever. Cool. So there you go. Uh, movie 
TV suggestions, whatever. Um, <laughs> at Numeron wants to ask Shibby about his pronunciation and articulation of English. Once again, it's just one take of reading as fast and as loud and as stupid as possible. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it is I'm not good at reading teleprompter. What? What'd you say? <laughs> Excuse me, what? I couldn't understand you. You can pick whatever's left, uh, Elliot. And sometimes, yeah, a lot of, a lot of spit gets going on. I yeah. need a drink out of my can. It's, it's not even spit. It's You're getting like... Uh, uh, like phlegm from the back of my mouth. Yeah, no, you're drying out too, and oh, teeth yeah. are getting stuck. It is a yeah, weird. My, uh, my No Man's Sky one. That was my longest review. I think longer than my Tuggies review of the year, and that was I was out of any kind of moisture in my mouth. Just gone. I can't I wait the, for the. I have the opposite year. problem. My mouth gets too moist while I'm while I'm talking. If I'm talking for too long, it'll just fill up with spit. Yeah, one thing I want to work on is, is my breathing. Whether I'm sucking in too hard or it needs to go through the... Yeah, Maybe you, you have I, a deviated septum. Maybe. No, but just was, take a pause was, every time you need to breathe. A... Yeah, like Donald Trump? <laughs> yeah, he was like on coke or something. But... Yeah, Carrie Fisher said that uh, she can confirm that that is a coke sniffle. I should know. I'm Princess Leia. Yeah, that's what she <laughs> said. She readily admitted, I know a thing or two about cocaine. Yeah. And that's a coke sniffle. Okay. Um, oh, here's a good one from Chico at Francis and a string of numbers. Very memorable. His phone number. Great choice. I hope not. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's not enough of them. Uh, do you guys still celebrate the holiday season? And if not, when's the last time you did? Who doesn't celebrate the yeah. holiday season? Are they talking about Halloween or? Are we talking about 420 or, or what? By the way, uh, I was in Lowe's yesterday, uh, smelling the wood. And they already have their Christmas trees up. Of course they fucking do. It's October. Yeah, they don't really have, like, Halloween stuff, I guess, as much. But they already have the trees up. And I got real uh, warm and toasty. I love the holiday season. Everyone knows that about me. I, I think it's magical. I think it's great. And I think that they should put Christmas in February so we have even longer to celebrate. No. So once it hits Thanksgiving, <laughs> Christmas music. I, I love that. Christmas I, music I, just I makes me feel good. I fucking hate Christmas music. I Get some Mike Bublé I find, or some Sinatra. I find the vast majority of... Christmas associated things to be tacky and uh, <laughs> cancerous, and tacky. <laughs> tacky and gaudy and uh, <laughs> and undesirable. I do not decorate. Oh, those undesirables! I have never, I've <laughs> never had a Christmas tree in my house as an adult. Uh, you've never had a Christmas tree when I was a kid. Yeah, no, but at, like you've never gotten a tree for your no, apartment. Why the or fuck would I do that? It's a big fire hazard. It's not a big fire hazard. Just go get it's a like fucking plastic tree. All that pine, all the, and the plastic ones. What's the point? The only good thing about it is the pine smell. I think I have True. a tree. I bought a tree last year. I so. did too. Um, yeah, I don't <laughs> decorate at all. I don't put up lights. I don't get a tree. Um, the extent of my Christmas celebration is buying gifts for my parents and my siblings and my significant other and uh, wrapping it in year-round wrapping paper. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you go to the, the Sunday paper and pull out the comics? <laughs> no, I'm not that uh, thrifty, but yeah. I could be. Um, it's a good idea. I I do like drinking hot toddies and mold wine, mm -hmm. uh, and I enjoy making it. But um, I, don't I had know. a Christmas party last year. You were there, weren't you? Yeah, that was fun. But yeah, it I got the uh, honey baked ham. It wasn't really a Christmas party. That was just sort of a party. Yeah, but I had honey baked ham, and we had uh, uh, we didn't carol eggnog. I, I wasn't invited. So yeah, I he was not invited. It's a very small apartment. Uh, and well, you could fit a few people, especially Chevy. <laughs> I'm <laughs> tall. I don't take a lot of room. He's very skinny. Uh, I do have a high ceiling, so you would have That's fine. great. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. Christmas is fine, I guess. I love it. You don't love it? It's like the it's, most well, warm and toasty here's, feeling. Here's, the thing that sucks is we're in Los Angeles. Yeah, I think that's why I've never been that into it, because uh, uh, I've lived briefly in Germany twice, and each time was during Christmas. And Christmas, oh, they take it serious Christmas there. there, loved it. Christmas in Europe, when it's like actually cold and like there's actually you know, like the architecture matches the holiday. It's not like fucking. <laughs> it's all gingerbread houses. houses. Yeah, like that. That I really liked. Like they get into the spirit in a very like kind of traditional, non corporate way. I was into that, and just the fact that it's cold. Uh, but, that's the yeah, biggest point in California, especially Southern California. I'm just like, I, it doesn't feel like Christmas. Well, that's why I'm saying they should move it to February because global warming has shifted. Even uh, in, in the uh, northern states, wasn't it, it this year in February? It was like 110 degrees one day. Yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> but no, it, it doesn't get cold until like January. Until now. Well, you're cold apparently. But uh, the thing that I like most about Christmas is just like everyone's having fun. Everyone's having a good time. Santa's great for the kids. 
you can go, even though it's fucking 90 degrees out, they have like an ice skating rink. So you think they're going to see scary Santas roaming the streets? Oh, that'd be great. You know, they're going to ruin Santa now, too? Just like they ruined that'd clowns? That'd be awesome. It's a promotion for Bad Santa 2. Office Christmas Party. Yeah, that one, too. Yeah, you got fun movies coming out. You got Star Wars coming out during oh, Christmas I do like time. The, the holiday movie season. I like that Christmas is around that time. Well, I guess they, they sort of, one exists for the other. But, yeah, uh, yeah I mean, I, I, I do end up seeing, like, three movies a week in theaters basically starting in November all the way through oh, yeah. the end of the year. And it's always just like, wow, I really wish they would spread these out a lot more. Because these movies are all fantastic. Well, and the, the thing is, too, is that you actually have time to go see them because you're off. Like, we, we get true. the two weeks off Every of work. Every Christmas I go yeah, see we like, so I go see movies. We still got videos to go up, though. Well, yeah, so you're working the entire month before that just yeah. slamming videos it's out. It's like South Park. But uh, I'm going to Thailand this year for Christmas because I made the big decision last year after going back to Florida, which is what I did every year, that it sucks. I love seeing my parents, but it costs as much to go from Los Angeles to Florida on a flight as it does to go to Thailand. Really? Yeah. And I've never been there. And it's dirt cheap. When I go to when I go to Florida, my parents' house, like, it's not big enough for me to stay in anymore. Like they have my grandma moved in with my parents. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we had to stay on a fucking blow up mattress and we just gave that up sucks. and got a hotel. Yeah. And the hotels are fucking expensive. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, for the same amount of money that I'm spending to go visit my parents, I could just go to Thailand and like video chat with That's them. awesome. Yeah. I wonder how much money I've saved over the last Eleven You've years. You've saved thousands. By just, going, just driving home. Well, yeah. My, I mean, I live close enough to my family that during Christmas break, I drive back and forth several times. Yeah, that's uh, thousands of dollars yeah. you've saved. I've never flown. I, yeah, I've never on flown average, cross country on during a holiday. On average, it's around for me to go home to Florida. It's about eight hundred to nine hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah. Round, round trip because it's because people go to Florida as a vacation during Christmas. Time. I should have been just putting that money like in my savings it's every, every time I see my friends fly away. I just put a couple hundred dollars away. Build a new computer. Rich. Yeah. yeah, one thing I'm struggling with is last year we did a week in Pennsylvania at Liz's place and a week in Wisconsin. Being two weeks away from home is just too much for me. I like routine, being home, and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And one thing that I have not done yet is tell my parents I'm not coming home for Christmas yet and that Liz and I are going to go back to Big You're Sky. You're telling them on the podcast? They're listening right now. Probably yeah. not. But yeah. we're, we're just going to go skiing or something just with ourselves. Yeah. No, it's a, gr- it's a great thing. It. I've told my parents many times to come out here and visit because then they'd actually like see something new and do something different. Hmm. They're just like meh, meh. There's no NASCAR. Well, it's just there like I've even NASCAR. told I told my parents I would split the f- their both of their flights to come out here for Thanksgiving because we'll be gone for Christmas. And they're like, eh, you know, uh, probably not. <laughs> just like, okay, well, There's I, tr- football. I tried. I, can't come. I tried. Oh. Wow. Packers aren't out of the playoffs yet. They keep winning. You got to go. We, we we should start some. I mean, it sucks because we're going to be so busy leading up to it. But it would be nice to like go up to Big Bear, like up in the mountains before Christmas, because then you get the cold. You get the trees. That Oktoberfest. There's, with, Drake the we, there's still with plenty of bookings. Big Bear. No, uh, but what I'm saying is we have to work so much in the weeks leading up to Christmas. Yeah. But it's hard to do a weekend away. True. Well, January. You can book something. But that's after Christmas. Right. Well, we, like you said, <laughs> it should just be an entire season. Yeah. How was that Rams game you went to? They lost. It was <laughs> I mean, I was there. It was fun. It was too hot. I'll never go stand in the sun like that ever again. Everyone wants a football team until they have one. How much was that IPA beer you had that I saw on Twitter? Like the can of beer? You what? had a drink in the stands? Oh, it wasn't terrible. I mean, it was like ten dollars, but it's it's an IPA at a stadium, so it's right. gonna be that much. Mm-hmm. So it's it wasn't bad. I think the highest I ever seen was sixteen dollars for a, a can. Uh, oh, sixteen ounce. It like the Staples Center during the playoffs for Ridiculous. like NBA. It's like fourteen dollars for a can of like Miller Lighters. Yeah, yeah. That, now that should be criminal. Yeah, it should <laughs> be. Well, on that note, <laughs> what an ending. Yeah, and that, folks, should be criminal. Bye bye. Woo.